Anyway, Proverbs chapter 31, enough rambling, amen, get to the Bible. Proverbs 31, if you'll stand with me in honor of the Word of God, we're going to read just a couple verses real quick. And in light of Mother's Day, I'd like to just uh, preach a message entitled for, or to the moms this morning. Uh, I believe that all of us can learn something this morning, uh, but I'd like to give some honor to moms and what a, blessings that they, what a blessing that they are and give some helps, I believe, that can be a blessing uh, and, and, and help us learn something from the Bible. But Proverbs chapter 31, we're going to start in verse 1. The Bible says, The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him, what, my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows, give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for uh, Mother's Day and, uh, Lord, the chance to recognize our moms, Lord, in the room and that make up the church. Lord, uh, what a blessing that they are. Lord, we couldn't have a good church, Lord, without good moms, Lord, that love you and that take their children and point them to Christ. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless moms this Mother's Day. And, Lord, what a blessing that they are and the honor that they de deserve. Lord, I pray that they would learn something this morning from the Word of God that would be a help. Uh, Lord, that you'd give us something from the Word of God. Everybody here, not just the moms, but all the men, all the young children, Lord, that we would all learn something from the Word of God. And may, Lord, it be a blessing. Thank you, Lord, so much for all that have made it out this morning. Pray that you'd bless all that we do and say, Holy Spirit, would you meet with us? Give me the words that you'd have me to say. If anything, Holy Spirit, that I have written down, that I believe that you'd have me to say, if it's not what you'd want, I pray that Holy Spirit, you'd not let me say it, but pray that your words, Lord, would be what you'd give to me. And just love you and thank you. Ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Mother's Day, I believe, is a wonderful day. I enjoy taking time to recognize the importance of, of moms in our lives. Amen. I believe, like I said, that moms are probably one of the uh, most unrecognized and uh, one of the most probably uh, ill-treated in America today. You look at the average home in America, and I believe that moms are probably one of the most neglected. Amen. But moms are a big part of what makes up the home. Amen. God, as we know, in the book of Genesis, uh, the first mother... Uh, her name was Eve. God brought Eve to Adam, and uh, she became his helpmeet, and she became his wife. God has intended, amen, for a husband and a wife, and then for wives to be moms, amen. God's, what, what, a, what a mothers are a part of God's plan, amen, and a beautiful part of God's plan. I believe where in America where we go wrong is when we try to take motherhood out of, the, out of God's plan. Can I tell you that's what uh, homosexuality is? That's trying to take motherhood out of God's plan, amen. And uh, I know I've talked about it one Sunday, but I'd like to say it again. Uh, Target is wrong for trying to interfere with God's plan, amen. And uh, this goes on YouTube, so I want Wichita to know there's a church that preaches that God's plan is a mom and a dad, amen. Amen. Mom and a dad, because a home has to have a mom. Amen. There's something in a child's life that cannot be filled by a dad. It has to be filled by a mother. Amen. This last week, I've become a little burdened. My daughter, is, when I'm holding her, she'll kind of whine, cry, you know, and I try to comfort her, you know, and it doesn't work quite the same. Sarah comes over, grabs her, no whining, no crying, comforted, smiles. I thought, what does she have that I don't? <laughs> it's because she's a mother. <laughs> I had to come to grips this last week. She's a mom. And children have, there's something about a mother's love. Amen. And all of us in this room have had mothers. That's why you're here. And there's something about a mother's love. Amen. And moms, I want you to, I want to give you honor to realize that you are a very special person. God made you very special. God has put you in this world. God put man in this world to have fellowship and to work and tend the garden. God gave Eve to Adam to be a helpmeet and to be a mom. 
you have a special purpose. Amen. Us men, we get to clean and cut the yards and we get to go out and work. And not that I'm against women working, amen, I, not that at all. But moms have that special purpose that God did not give to men, amen. God gave to man the task of providing. Women's, women get that special purpose of being a mom to children and having a mother's love that only God gave to a mom. So I want you to realize how special that you are this morning. Men, can I say that your wife deserves to be treated special? I believe where America is going wrong is men are not treating their wives that are, their, that are uh, the mothers of their children. They're not treating them the way they ought to be. Women should be treated special. The Bible says that a wife ought to be nourished and cherished. The nourish is to be provided for. Men, men ought to provide for their wives, for the mother of their children. But women also are to be cherished. That word cherish should be, means to be made warm, to be made feel special. Your wife should be cherished. Just as, just as man cherishes gold and man will cherish diamonds and things of value, we cherish those things. We keep those for special purposes. I believe the mothers in this room ought to be cherished. Amen. Men, if you have a good wife that loves your children, you ought to cherish that. Cherish that. Men, if you have a wife that loves you, cherish that. Treat her special. Treat her with the respect that she deserves. Amen. What a special part mothers are. Here in Proverbs 31, 1, we see a, a mom teaching a son. I believe the difference between a wife and a mother is a wife is a helpmeet to the man. A mother is a teacher to her children. The difference between being a good wife and a good mom is a good wife is a good helpmeet to the man. A good mom is a teacher to her children. There's a difference. When you became a wife, ladies, you became a helpmeet to the man. The man is the head of the home like we talked about in Sunday school. He is the authority. We're to, the ladies are to submit to the man. But in that, the men take that authority and use it to cherish the wife, make her feel special. Amen. But at the same time, a wife begins to be that helpmeet, and then when you become a mom, then you become a teacher to those children. So you may be a good helpmeet, but now you've got a whole other task. You're the teacher. Men, we go to work. Men, we do things, and, and, and not every home is privileged to have a stay-at-home mom. But moms, whether stay at home or go to work, they still are the teacher. They still, the children watch mom. Amen. So moms, you have a special purpose, but you also have a special job this morning. You have to teach those children. Men, we do teach our children, yes. But moms are the special focus of children. I believe that. And I believe that it's taught here in what we're going to see. But moms, can I plead with you today also to realize that what you teach your children will influence their lives or will influence them for the rest of their lives. What are you teaching your children this morning? What do you teach your children on a regular basis? Also remember this. You may not have children in the home now, but every mom, I believe, is a teacher to three different groups of people. You're a teacher to, number one, your children. You're a teacher to your family, and you're a teacher to other women. In the, in the Bible, it talks about Paul encourages mothers, and he says the older women that have already had children and children out of the home are to teach the younger women how to love their husbands, how to love their children, how to keep the home. So, Mom, even though you may not have children, you still are a teacher to other ladies about what being a mother is. But you're also a teacher to your family. Your family watches you. A husband watches his wife. Children watch their mom. Family members watch moms. And you also teach how to love to other members of the family. But most importantly, you're a teacher to your children. Your children should be the number one priority in teaching. Amen. Yes, Lord, my servant heareth. Can I ask you, what do you teach your children? If you have children in the home still, what do you teach them? If children are gone, then what do they see in, their, in your life now? Because you still teach them even though they're grown. On a good poem that I heard that I'd like to read to you. said, I thought it surely didn't matter, 
the little things I did. Just a fib while on the phone or some secrets that I'd hid. At church, I tried to be the best Christian that I could, but at home, I'd let my guard down and did whatever I would. For the things under my cart, I really planned to pay, but since the clerk forgot them, I just drove away. Just some careless comments about some people that we knew. Unkind and hurtful thoughts, it really seemed like a few. I criticized the pastor committing minor sin. Kept things from my husband, I should have told him then. They were all such little things, but it breaks my heart to see that my little girl was watching and she turned out just like me. You're a teacher to your children. Your children will look at you one day and what they saw in you as a mom, please remember that they'll copy that. Especially the little girls. They'll remember their mom. Remember how mom taught them to be a lady. Remember how mom taught them to provide and take care of the husband. I believe there's some things here that I can help you if you'd like to give the message a title called How to Be a Successful Mother. I'd like to give you some principles from this chapter about how to be a successful mother. And again, it's not just for those that have children in the home, but for those you're still teaching, even though children are gone. You're a teacher till the day that you die. How to be successful at it. I believe there's some principles here that will help us learn something. Proverbs chapter 31, we're going to go down to verse number 10. The Bible says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Can I tell you that a mom that is virtuous, a mom that has character, a mom that has purity, is a price far above rubies. It's a very valuable thing. Moms, you're very valuable today. But what makes you of value is not who you are, not because you bear the title mother, but what makes you of value is what you are. What you do at home, what you teach your children, what you do at church, all of those things that children watch and see, as we'll see in this chapter about this mom, that's what gives a lady value. See, any lady can have the title mother. Being a mom is not hard. Any lady can have that title. But to be virtuous takes character. I believe America has gone down because of men and women that have lost the virtue of being a mom and a dad. Amen. We need to, be, we need to get back to being successful. Come Father's Day, dads, you're going to get your sermon. But today's for the mothers, amen. So don't worry, dad, you're coming. Got my sights on you now. But I believe these are some things, how to be a successful mother. Number one, look at verse number 11. It says, The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So we see in Proverbs 31 a picture of a virtuous woman, but this woman is a mother. It talks a little bit later about her children. So I believe that we can see some things about this lady that God gives us that makes her virtuous, that makes her successful, amen? And I want you to be successful moms, but it starts with, here in verse 11, it starts with number one, if you're taking notes, be respectful to your husband. This husband did not have to worry about his wife because he trusted in her. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. He did not have to worry about when he went to work if she would be faithful. She did not have to wor- he did not have to worry when he went to work if his wife would do the right thing, if his wife would, let the child- would take care of the children. He did not have to worry if the wife would take care of the home. His heart safely trusted in her. Ladies, can I encourage you to be a successful mom? Be respectful to your husband. Love your husband. Amen. When- and-, and-, and take care of that husband. It says she will do him good. Do your husband good, not evil. Amen. Even though sometimes I've seen in homes where husbands have gone wrong, the command is still to do him good. Now, it does not mean that you're okay with sin. Amen. It does not mean that we're okay when husbands are in sin, but it's never right to do wrong, to get a chance to do right. 
the response of a lady should be to do him good and not evil all the days of her life. You say, how does that affect me being a mother? Because how you treat your husband is how your children will treat your husband. How you treat that man is how your children will think of him. They'll lose respect for dad by watching mom's respect for her husband. Dad is to be the home, the head. He's supposed to have the authority. But if a wife is disrespectful to that man, if she tears down his authority, then men won't follow. That's not saying that men are always right. I'll be the first to admit men are always, I mean, men are not right all the time. I know I fail. I'll be the first to admit. Anybody else want to join me here? I fail. But in that failure, that never gives an excuse. Sometimes we want to make excuses. Well, if he would, then I would. I tell you, that's not God's plan. Be respectful to your husband. Ladies, you ought to respect the man that God gave you. You can be respectful also in how you treat others. How you respect that man sometimes is determined by how you treat others. Amen. Be respectful to your husband. 1 Peter 5, 3, 5, and 6. I'll read this to you. It's a great verse. I didn't print it, so I have to turn to it in my Bible here. At least you know your pastor knows his Bible. How about that? 1 <laughs> Peter chapter 3. Verse 5 and 6 says this, For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also... So it, God gives us an idea of holy women. Women that are Christ-like. Look what they did. It says, who trusted in God. They trusted in the Lord. They adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Ladies, can I just be honest and tell you, you're not right with God if you're not submissive to your husband. I didn't, put it, I didn't put it in print. God wrote His Word. And He said, you're not right with Him if you're not respectful to your husband. If you don't submit to the man that God gave you, you'll never be right. You'll never have God's blessings. Look there, verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Does that mean that Abraham was, that Sarah was a slave? No, it just means that Sarah gave her husband the respect he deserved. It says, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazements. God gives the husband some things to do. Like I said, we'll zero in on that. But the wife has to start with loving that husband and giving him the respect, being in subjection. That simply means that you submit to God's plan. God's plan is for the wife to submit. If you don't, then you're not in God's will. A great preacher said this, either you're in God's will or you're in God's way. Listen to me, you remember that. Ladies, either you're in God's will or you're in God's way. Because God has a plan for your husband. God wants him to fulfill a purpose. If you're not in God's will, then God can't use the husband like he would. So then, then that means you're in God's way. Not let it be said of a lady that you'd be in God's way. Be in God's will. I believe that we, a lady ought to trust in God and love the Lord. Amen. That's what a holy lady does. God says, be holy as I am holy, trusting in God. And when you trust in God, that means you trust God's plan. And God's plan is to be respectful. Proverbs 31. We'll go back there. Number two. Look here. It says, Verse 13, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. Moms, I believe the next thing you can do to be a successful mother is be willing to work. Now, I'm not talking about having to go out and find a secular job. Some do. But this willing to work talks about in the home as well. Be willing to work, amen. Don't be a lazy mom. I believe part of America's problem is this. Amen. 
Hey, quit that. The baby's crying, honey. Listen, America has become so sidetracked. Moms have forgotten their responsibility because of the internet, because of Facebook, because of Twitter, because in the name of staying in contact with everybody, our children are neglected. You need to be willing to work. Love that home. Work in that home. You may not have the abilities as some others do, but you know what you can do. The object is not each mom is compared to each other, but each mom does what she can do, and that's what God will bless. Be willing to work. Be willing to clean. Be willing to cook. Be willing to do what a wife should be doing. That's what makes a successful mom. Listen to me. Your children will respect you as a mom that's willing to work. How many times have I seen moms neglect children? Let me tell you, America's in a mess. Now, I'm thankful that around here there's some good moms and mothers that love their children. But I want to preach because I've seen it happen in even good churches. The devil works and gets in the way. Be willing to work. Don't be a lazy mom. Get up early. Stay up late. Look what she did here in Proverbs 31. It says, She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly. So not only did she work, but look, she did it willingly. Mom, your spirit in working affects your family. Well, I got to clean the dishes well, I can't believe I got to pick up after everybody. If everybody would pick up after themselves, I'd have to do less work around here. Amen. Now, I'll be honest, I agree. <laughs> if I would pick up after myself, I'd make less work <laughs> for my wife. However, it's the spirit in what you do. She reminds me of, excuse me, <laughs> there's a hamper over here. Why are your clothes over there? There's an there's a elf. <laughs> Carries my clothes everywhere. I don't know why he does it. I'll set a trap for him. <laughs> and it's not about that you have to just take slave, slave, slave. But So a man forgets a few things. But be willing to pick up. Be willing to clean. In the right spirit. You can say things to your husband in the right spirit. Excuse me. My wife, sometimes I'll be sitting uh, at home and checking emails for the church and stuff like that, and I'll just be sitting there, and uh, I'll hear this, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I think, well, oh. but it's always done in the right spirit. Be careful, Mom, about your spirits. You have to work in the home, and it's a chore. Listen, I tried, Sarah and some of the ladies went to a ladies thing, and I said, I'll take care of Adeline for three hours, God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I'm not a mother. Any other man want to say, oh, yeah, that was tough. I was at the church trying to do work. Hey, quick, 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 quick. I don't know how to multitask. I'll be the first to admit it. Man, that was tough. How does she do it? Moms, you have a special task, but do it in the right spirit. The spirit in your home is, 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 is set by the mom. Work willingly. Amen. Work and do it because you love your husband. Sure, he doesn't always pick up after himself, but you have a good spirit about it. You watch your home change drastically. Work willingly. Amen. And this is what I believe the principle is being taught. Not every mom will always be able to stay home, but every mom's priority should be to try as much as possible. Listen to me. It's not always possible, but I believe every mom's priority should be the home first. If your home is neglected, I would say get rid of the job. Amen. But now, like I said, you have to. Some have to. One day it may come to where Sarah and I, we have to do something like that. My goal is to give her the chance to make the home the priority. And you can work a job and take care of the home. I believe that completely. But make sure that the priority is the home. Don't neglect your home. Work willingly. That's what makes a successful mother. The reason America's in a mess, because mothers have lost the priorities. We've lost priorities. Amen.
Number three, verse number 16. She considereth the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth the vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and straighteneth her arm. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. I believe another thing is, Mom, be resourceful. What makes a successful mom is a resourceful mom. You don't always have to have the best of everything. Amen. Be resourceful. Now, I know for many of us, we all understand this point of where we like on sale. I know I do. Praise God. But you know what? I don't do the shopping. My wife has to take care of that, and she's very resourceful with it. She comes back and says, look what I got for this. This is one thing, though, I tell you, I'll never understand. I'll be at home sitting down, doing what good men do. You know, we read the paper and drink coffee. Praise God. No, I'm just kidding. This is, this is so funny. And, and, and as a man, I try, I've tried to wrap my head around it, and I can't figure it out. But she'll come home, guess what I got? And I think, oh, wow, we saved money. And she says, this was, I'll just throw a number out there, this was $100. Now it's on sale for $60. We're saved 40 bucks. <laughs> I think, that's still expensive. <laughs> But you saved $40. I was like, just because it's on sale doesn't mean you're saving money. <laughs> but it's on sale. That's it. I try to teach sale. Okay, this is how men work. Just because it says sale doesn't mean it's on sale. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She knows, amen. I, I don't always do it, but it's funny, amen. I, I start trying to wrap it. She says, no, I'm telling you. And I'm like, ah. I bargain. Say, I go to the guy at the counter and say, 60 bucks? What are you guys thinking around here? You know, I try to, my, my, my grandmother's good at this, okay? My grandmother, and I'll tell you a story, get back to the message. My grandmother will take her shoes. She'll wear them for a year, and she will not be satisfied. She's Jewish. She won't like the shoes. They'll wear out too fast. She'll take them back to the store and go find the manager and complain and walk out of the store with a pair of brand new shoes. Never seen before in my life. Man, I mean, that lady's amazing. I was like, hey, take my boots, Grandma. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> she's resourceful, let me tell you. Yeah. But ladies, be resourceful. Find ways to help your husband. Find ways to do things around the budget. Maybe you can't always have the best. Maybe you can't always have this or that. But find ways to be resourceful for your family. She found ways, this lady, to make things. She made things herself. She planted a vineyard. She did things to help in the home. Be resourceful. Amen. I think what a part of being a good, successful mom is finding ways to help your husband resourcefully. Amen. Uh, number four, be compassionate. Verse number 20, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. One of the biggest things for a good, successful mom is be compassionate. Be a loving mom. This lady not only loved her family, but she loved others. Boy, I tell you, that's true in this church. I know the ladies, not only do you love your family, but you're, you love others and how you help. Many, many are willing to help. On the, on, just at, at the spur of a moment. That's compassion. God says the key to a successful mom is being a compassionate mother. But being compassionate not just for your family, but for others. Amen. The biggest compassion that a mom can have, I believe, is a compassion for souls. The biggest compassion besides your children, besides loving that home, outside of that home, the biggest compassion that you can have is loving souls and winning people to Jesus Christ. Believe this, Mom, if you'll learn to lead people to Christ, if you'll learn to be a soul winner, I believe you'll learn to love your home that much more. If you'll learn to love to bring people to Jesus and have God's love for people, God will give you His love for your home as well. Be a soul winning, Mom. Be willing to go soul winning. Be willing to lead people to Christ. Be willing to teach your children how to go soul winning and how to be compassionate for souls. Believe the biggest thing we've lost is a compassion for souls in churches. Love people. Love souls. Be a soul winner. But be compassionate. Love your home. Love your husband. Amen. Be a compassionate. But not only just for souls, but look, she said, for the poor. Be a mom willing to take care of when, uh, of when God puts on your heart to take care of somebody. Many times I've watched my mom make meals for, for poor people. For the poor. Many times I've watched my mom buy groceries. And I watched as mom was compassionate on people that needed help. And she taught her children to love people. See, what you do is you help to love others as well. 
and that teaches your children. You say, this doesn't have anything to do with child rearing. Yes, it does. Your children will watch your love for other people. And they'll know a mom that loves people, but ultimately a mom that loves God. Amen. Biggest thing your children should see is a love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in America, we've lost it. You listen to me. I believe in America, we've lost this one thing, and that's that we don't love God like we should. And our children, watch as they grow up, and children don't love God as they should. You know why? Because we don't have a mom that loves the Lord like they should. You put God first, mom. You be compassionate, but you love God first. And you say, dear God, I need your help with my family. You watch God take care of your home. Put God first. Love the Lord. Be compassionate. Amen. This lady here, I believe this is required. Compassion is required to be that virtuous mom. Number five. We keep moving. Let's look here. Verse number uh, 21, it says, She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. I believe the next step to being a successful mom is to be a modest mom. Listen to me. According to the Word of God, the next step to being a successful mother, you mark it down as your pastor, from the Word of God is to be a modest mom. How your children see you dressed in the home is what they will think God is okay with. Listen to me. Look, and this mom took into consideration what her children were covered in. We were out in, at Dillon's yesterday, and I'll say this. It is sad to see what moms let their children dress in. There was a little girl... We saw, not, 11 year, not even 11 years old, walking around in almost nothing. You listen to me, that's sad in America. That you would expose and be okay with exposing a child. Listen to me, moms, you're to take care of what those children wear. Because the eyes of men are always watching. And it's sad in America that we have to deal with sin like that. But mom, can I plead with you? Can I beg you as a pastor? Can I beg you as I've watched homes fall apart? That where it starts with your children is at a young age watching what they're clothed in. Listen to me, you may think I'm crazy. You may think this is nuts, and you may never heard it before, but I've seen the homes. I've seen the families. I've seen the children. Your, those children are scarred because we're not considerate. We don't take time to watch. Listen, it brings tears to my eyes to deal with teenagers and to listen to the stories of teenagers that have had terrible things done to them. Mom, take time to watch your home. Please, please, I beg you, listen, I, I plead with you, watch that home. Walk guard around those children. Protect those children. But not only that, protect yourself. This lady was a modest lady. She protected herself. Listen to me. As a mom, you have a priority to protect yourself also from other men. There's not people out there with great intentions. And moms, you've got to protect yourself. Listen, as your pastor, I've also had to counsel these kinds of things. And I've had to witness. Ladies, protect yourself. You may come to church and there's not a problem around here. I, t I take care of it like that. But when you walk out of this, when you walk out of this church, there are people that are not intent that have no not good intentions. Protect yourself. But she clothed, look here, in silk and purple. She clothed herself like a lady. But she did that because look, her husband is known in the gates, and his heart, as we read at the beginning, safely trusted in her. 
Ladies, your, your husband should be able to safely trust and to know that you're going to be appropriate. I never have to worry about what man is going to look at my wife because I don't let her show anything. Listen, ladies, protect yourself for your husband. Protect yourself for the man that you love, that you said I do to, that you gave your life to, because it'll come back to bite you. How to be a good, successful mom? Be modest. Protect yourself. Her clothing was silk and purple. She was a lady. I believe in America, where we've lost it, has lost it with ladies that have desired to no longer keep themselves for their husband. But we want everybody else's attention. Listen, ladies, can I plead with you to be a successful mom? Let me show you another verse here. Go over to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 9, it says, In like manner also, God says, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. God says, in America, we've lost shame. We've lost the shame. We've lost the modest apparel because we've lost our shame. Amen. Be a successful mom. Love God and love your husband enough to not try to attract everybody else, but attract him. Amen. God says he wants a virtuous woman to be a mom. Moms, can I plead with you? Please listen to me. You don't understand. You don't understand as a pastor my heart as I know what this world and what the devil is trying to do to you and your home. The devil is attacking. Listen to me. You mark it down. If I have to get, I'll get your attention one way or another. Listen to me. If you mark it down, the devil is attacking mothers. The devil is after the women. You know why? Because the man's heart is to his wife. The devil can't get to the husband and the devil will get to the wife. Amen. And our homes are being destroyed. Ladies, be modest. Don't allow for others to see what God gave to your husband. Get that shamefacedness, that sobriety. Amen. That when people see you, they see the glory of God. But also, as we see there in our chapter, they see the glory of your husband. It says, her husband is known in the gates. How, um, how the world sees the wife is what they think of the husband. Amen. Ladies, you have a special job because you bring honor and glory to God, but you also bring honor and glory to a husband. Can I beg you, the devil's trying to strip that away from you. Don't let him do that. Don't let the devil have his way. Number six, be careful how you speak. Be careful how you speak. Look, verse 26, a successful mom says, She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Moms, be careful. Speak with wisdom. Speak with that law of kindness. When your children hear you, may they hear kind words. God forbid a child, a child here in the home, husbands and wives, what? Well, what's wrong with you? Listen, have that law of kindness. Let it be that your children hear kindness, wisdom, amen. That wisdom only comes from God's word. And listen, I failed. I failed as a husband already. I've only been married two years. <laughs> I've got to work on wisdom and that law of kindness. But God says to be a successful mom, your children ought to hear from your tongue kindness. Amen. A love for them. And I know many of you do. I've heard. 
And I'm thankful for a church. But listen, the devil will get into your home. And he'll get into your children through your words. Children should always be able to look back at mom and say, you know, no matter what happened, no matter what I did, I knew mom loved me. Even when I messed up. Can I tell you, I messed up as a kid. <laughs> I could tell you some stories. As a child, my mom would look at me and think, what are you thinking? And I'd have to get whooped. Well, I had a whooping, amen. I didn't get a spanking, I got a whooping, amen. My mom, uh, my grandma's from West Virginia. My mom, I mean, she'd grab a switch, amen. I got a whooping, amen, right on my backside. But every time after I got a whooping, I got a hug and a mom that said, listen, I love you. And I discipline you because I want you to turn out right. Boy, it's only a mom that can do that. Dads, something different about dads. You know, when you get spanked by dad, you're like, yes, sir. Dad's like, give me a hug. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want dad. Give me a hug, son. <laughs> Moms, they spank you. Moms, come here. What do kids do? <laughs> you know why that comes from? Because mom had that special kindness of a mother's love. Let me tell you, it's nothing like it. Moms, let it be kindness. That your children will turn around and say, you know what? I, was, I can't believe my, my parents put up with me. But they can look and say, but I know my mom loved me. Amen. Kindness. Wisdom. Also, that, remember, that wisdom comes from the Word of God. Get that wisdom. Mom, spend time in your, in your Bible. Spend time in the Word of God. That way, when your children, they come to you and ask advice. You give them wisdom from God's Word. They'll know the rest of their lives. If I have a problem, Mom will know. I can call my mom sometimes and get good wisdom. My mom's a godly woman. Ladies, be godly. Spend time in the Word of God. Give your children wisdom. They can turn back and say, boy, mom has got wisdom. Too many moms in America no longer have wisdom because they're more concerned about themselves. We're more concerned about what we want. Mom, have that wisdom. Realize that, mom, your words will affect your children. What you talk about, how you talk about your husband, how you talk about God, how you talk about the man of God. Worst mistake you can ever do is talk about God in a wrong way, talk about the pastor in a wrong way, and talk about your husband. You do that and your children will lose respect for all three. Be careful, Mom. You may not even mean it, but be careful. Amen. Your children watch you. Your teachers. Amen. Too many moms are more worried and talk and their conversation with their children is more about a soap opera than it is about God. Let it be said that you talk about the Lord. Amen. What are you teaching your children? These six things, I believe if you'll apply them, I believe that you'll see a change in your home. This is what will happen from God's Word. Let me show you and we'll be done. Look at verse number 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. If you'll look well to these things, these are ways of your household. If you'll look well to them, what will the blessing be? Listen, verse 28. Her children arise up and call her blessed. One day your children will grow up and call you blessed. It's sad to hear, I used to work on a bus route. I used to remember to hear kids curse their moms. Boy, how terrible it is to hear a child speak ill of his mother. But you know why? Because as a mom, if that child doesn't feel that love and that compassion that God intended, they won't rise up and call you blessed. But if you follow these things, I promise you, your children will arise and call you blessed. They'll thank, thank God for my mother. Then look, her husband also 
and he prays with her. I believe if you'll, be a, if you'll follow these steps, your husband one day will turn around and he'll say, thank God for that woman. Like I said, husbands, we need to praise our wives. It says that he praiseth her. Praise your wife. When you're wife, you be thankful for a godly wife and you praise her. God's given you a good woman. If she takes care of your home and she helps you and provides in, in any way that she can and take care of your children, then men, we ought to praise our wives. Then what happens? Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. So number one, your children and your husband will rise up and call you blessed. Number two, you will excel above others. You will be, you will be excellent. The Bible says you'll excel them all. There may be ladies... But you follow these steps and God says you'll be excellent. Boy, I want to be an excellent Christian. Amen. In God's eyes, it says you'll excel them all. See, that's what's neat. In God's eyes. See, God's watching and He does compare. God does compare. And He wants to see who will excel. Do you excel in God's eyes? Look there, verse number 30. And then the last thing. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You'll be praised of God. See, favor is deceitful. You may be favored by the world. That doesn't mean you have favor with God. You may be beauty. You may be beautiful in the world's eyes, but look, God says beauty's vain. See, these women on the magazines, they try to make themselves beautiful, but gentlemen, can I tell you that it's vain? It's empty. There's no satisfaction. You keep your eyes on a woman that fears the Lord because then there's a return. Too many men have let their eyes wander. We've let our eyes wander to favor and beauty. But God says favor is deceitful. In other words, it has a different intention. Beauty is empty. But God says when He finds a woman that fears the Lord, she'll be praised. You'll be praised not by your favor and your beauty, but by your fear of God. Then look in verse 31, the last thing. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Can I remind you, ladies, you'll reap what you sow. God says her own works will praise her. That means your works, what you do for your household. If you follow these steps, they'll come back and they'll praise you. But if you don't, they'll come back and they'll haunt you. Because I remind you that poem... That mom thought she got away with everything, but she realized a child was watching. One day, the fruit of your labor will come back in your children, and you'll realize, wow. Now again, children may not always respond correctly, but it should not be because you didn't teach them correctly. You'll have a higher percentage a higher chance of your children turning out for God by following these steps to be a successful mom. Your own works will praise you. Amen. I want you to be successful mothers. As a pastor, I pray for you. My wife and I, we pray. And we want you to be successful. You know why? Because the children here, there's a special peace that God has for them. God has a special plan, and it starts with the moms. Boy, y'all are so important. I want you to know, as a pastor, I don't take it lightly, how important that you mothers are to this church. We couldn't do it without good moms. You deserve more honor and more than just a book. If I could, I'd give all you moms $100 shopping gift cards, let you raid the town. One of these days, I might try. <laughs> Brother West, let's write that down. We may break the bank, but no. Because you deserve so much more. Moms do. They do so much. Deserve so much more. But let me tell you, you can do even more by following God's steps. Be that successful mom. Be that Proverbs 31 woman. Because that woman was a good mother as well. 
You say, those didn't have anything to do with child rearing. Yes, they did. Because my last statement, your children will learn more from what they see you do than what they hear you do. You remember, your children will learn more from what they see of your example than what they hear of your example. They live with you every day. You can come and fool the church, but you'll never fool your children. Remember that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord.